Okay. Um, in this interview, I'm interviewing Speedy Gone Cuba, who has a YouTube channel currently with about 600 subscribers. So if somebody isn't subscribed to your channel, why should they subscribe? It's a speed cubing channel. Right. <laughs> Anything else people should know about your channel? Um... Um, I unbox cubes and make tutorials about how to get faster. Right. So what's your... I just make cubing videos. What's your most interesting tutorial you've made then? Uh, maybe my how to solve a Rubik's Cube video or... My how to, I think my how to be sub X videos do quite well. Right. Like my how to be, how to be sub 15, how to be sub 12. They do quite well. And, and instead I make a video about why I won't make videos like that. <laughs> but anyway, I, I guess it's a fair pro project. I mean, my problem with videos like that is they say all sorts of things that you should do to be sub X when actually like, you can be sub x without doing any of those things so, yeah they're just like basic tips yeah like yeah. improve f2l look ahead or learn more algorithms yeah and it's the the issue is like they are helpful but like the issue is well you can be sub that without doing any of those things you can also do all of those things and not be sub x so <laughs> it's just not clear cut but, yeah like there's so many ways to get faster mm, yeah i mean there are people who are sub seven with c4 Peru and maybe even zz i think so yeah um i also wanted to catch you out with a few non cuby related questions so um what's your favorite type of biscuit um just a biscuit <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, so I got my, I, I mean, my dad probably won't watch this. I got him a set of the different creams. So you've got digestive creams, custard creams, bourbon creams, lemon creams, orange creams. Fancy. Yeah, they're all good. They're all good. <laughs> Although when I sent them over to Lucas Batima, when he ordered 100 mailongs, he'd never tried any of them. Wait, he'd never tried the custard creams, which is interesting. <laughs> So uh, my, my second non cuban related question I wanted to ask is, um, well, what if you could have one superpower, what would it be? I mean, you've probably been asked that before, haven't you? To solve the Rubik's Cube very quickly. <laughs> How quickly then? Sub world record. Right, OK. Hmm. Interesting. Everything has to be about cubing. Well, yes, I suppose. You, know, like you couldn't make a biscuit question and get about cubing, could you? Well, you could get a Rubik's Cube biscuit if that existed. Yeah, was it you who had some sort of cubing birthday cake or something? No, I don't think you did. I think my sister tried. I think I, think I once did like years ago, but I don't think I shared it anywhere. Right, okay, yeah. I think my sister tried that years ago, but yeah. So I noticed back in February uh, 2020, you were at some sort of talent show. How, how did that go? Like, It went really well. I came second. That was like North London's Got Talent. How did you get into that then? <laughs> I just signed up and it was it was like this charity thing. So I had to uh, like donate a certain amount of money to like a charity. And mm. then it and then that was what I needed to be in the talent show. And like, right. OK, mm. how many, I just solved the Rubik's Cube. In how, it. Many, yeah. how many people watching you then? <laughs> I don't know, maybe like a hundred and something. I didn't really count. I don't know. Did everything go well, okay was, then, being watched by a hundred and something people? Yeah, I, I was a bit nervous. Like, I averaged around 11 seconds back then, but then when I solved the cube in it, I got, like, a 15-second solve. 
because yeah. I was a, I was nervous and I made loads of mistakes in F two L, but but still like the the You're audience was clapping, so it's all right. You're reminding me of the issues, yeah. I I remember having to solve four cubes in front of the church before, and that was took me well over a minute to solve four cubes, which is disgraceful. Because I think I yeah, am. I think I also like tried to solve. Get, ha, see how many cubes I could solve in under one minute and I only solved three when like at home I would like solve like four probably more a lot more or four or five I don't know yeah I think I did once manage to break a minute with five cubes I've only done that once but obviously there's a difference there with the inspection time um, that seems difficult Although Max Park did, what is it, 430 something cubes in an hour, averaging eight seconds. Oh, I saw that one. <laughs> yeah, that, that one was really good. The live stream. So Christmas is coming up in two days. Are you getting any cubes? Are you wanting any cubes? Yeah, I think I already have like quite a lot of cubes. Like my collection's kind of big enough. I've got like a over a hundred cubes now. Right. So I guess your parents probably know not to get you cubes, just like that. Oh, it's, it's just <laughs> Yeah, but like when it's my birthday or something, they they just get me some random cubes. But now now there aren't really any new cubes that I need necessarily. <laughs> Because yeah. the, there are like there are like like I would like the Gan twelve and some of those cubes, but I definitely don't need that because the Gan eleven is good enough. Mm. I I mean I remember my sister commented on that a few few days ago, basically saying she couldn't get me any cubes. It's like if I want a cube, I'll get it. I'll get any new cube. Declare it as a business expense. So. <laughs> It's just so... then you'd review it on your channel yeah well at the moment i haven't really been able to do many reviews it's just unboxings i just don't have the time to actually they're, they're like the same thing unboxings reviews are pretty much the same kind of well, yeah but i think a review it needs to be after like you need to do a few hundred solves on a new cube so that you know whether it's any yeah or not it's... Yeah, like sometimes I would like make an unboxing and then I'll use it for a couple of days. And then at the end of the video, I'll just do like a quick couple minute review. Mm. And I do it all in one video sometimes. <laughs> I did that with my RSVM 2021 video, I think. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting way of doing things, I guess. Yeah. I need to actually try and do quality over quantity i think that's that's the thing i'm trying to do lots of quantity and you actually care about make quality videos <laughs> so so you have finally got wakefield open coming up so yeah unfortunately you're only there on the sunday so it's you can't do everything so what are your goals for the events that you can't do at wakefield but you can do hopefully at some point oh so the saturday events i think i forgot what this what all of those were but i think i saw like two by two four by four five by five there were there were like a lot more as well as like clock and blindfolded two by two i don't care about as much compared to other events like i want to learn full cll but i forgot so i forgot basically half the algorithms because I didn't practice and then four right. by four I average four by four again I'm not competing in that but I average about 55 seconds 50 like somewhere around just like under a minute and then five by five I average like just under two minutes right okay so obviously there's a lot of room for improvement there like I mean, yeah. yeah the events I'm doing like that were all on the Sunday are like pretty much like some of my favorite events apart from like one-handed I I'm actually like pretty decent at pyraminx megaminx and three by three yeah yeah I mean if you if you gave any dedicated practice to like five by five you would easily get close to a minute like I I speak knowing that because I average about the same as you at three by three, but I have a 105, five by five average. And that's just from 
practicing big cubes you've just got to you've got to look ahead and keep turning that's that's the key to it yeah like like on those cubes i just pause quite a lot and i think that's because i don't put much practice at the moment into those events but i'd like to practice them like if there's a competition when i will be able to do those events and i'll obviously put a lot of practice into them Mm, yeah <laughs> if and then when they have two rounds of six by six and seven by seven that's always fun as long as i don't dnf by having parity at the back and um fail to get through to finals <laughs> because that happens. yeah <laughs> so i don't know if they're organizing any other competitions i mean i presume you'll you'll want to go to any of them if they come up how far are you willing to travel then um well that that wakefield competition is quite far away from where i live but i i usually like go to competitions like nearer to where i live like london area but like around london but like that that competition because it was the first one since lockdown i was like i have to sign up for it kind of right yeah yeah <laughs> So how, were you there, sitting there at 6.59, just waiting to be able to press register? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to like sign up as soon as possible. Like I, I was actually like ready by seven, but then the page wasn't loading. And, and I was like really annoyed because, because I knew registration would like fill up really quickly. So I ended up signing up at I think like 7.07, .07, which was like seven minutes after registration. And I didn't think I'll get in, but oh, like I was really lucky and like, I managed to get in just about. Yeah. <laughs> it was a very popular competition, I think, because the places when the registration went full like so quickly oh yeah it was ridiculous i i wrongly thought that i could get away with uh waiting till half seven after running training finished but <laughs> no i mean I, I think james malloy the delegate said that he didn't expect it to fill up for a week <laughs> yeah usually like competitions with like 180 competitors usually like they 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 could take a few days until they fill up but i think because this one was the first one since before lockdown that that's probably like why it filled up so quickly it must be a very popular one was... and more than half the competitors are like i think new competitors as yeah. well so there's more people into cubing oh yeah it's well, a lot of people are getting into cubing i mean this is the thing i think somebody on the ukca discord was a sort of about a week or so ago like well is cubing dying out now and just like well just the same number of people are coming to my stores as ever before it's really not changing it's yeah so what are your goals for the channel in 2022 um i haven't decided this yet i'll probably make a video about it but I'd like a thousand subscribers. That's like, that would be a nice goal. I don't know when in a year it would happen, but that would be nice. But I just like to keep the consistency up and keep uploading, you know, good videos that, that are you that like give value mm. and more tutorials and, and like better tutorials right. as well. Yeah. What are you going to do when you get to 1,000 subscribers? I don't know. Usually at subscriber milestones, I usually do like a giveaway. So maybe I'll give away something. I'm not sure. No. Maybe like give away like something from speedcubing.org. <laughs> I mean, it's quite in my Zoom background, isn't it? You might have to. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Right. Uh, and have you got any interesting videos planned? Anything coming up? <laughs> um, I'd like to make. I'd like to make more videos on like how to be sub X because they get the most views on my channel. So I'd like to do one on how to do how to be sub five on Pyraminx. That that might make a good video. Mm. Also, like also like when I'm sub 10, because I average like low 10 and I'm nearly sub 10. So I would love to make a sub 10 tutorial, but I'm not sub 10 yet. So yeah. Yeah. 
I think that's getting to the stage where, yeah, like, I think at some point this year I'll hopefully be sub 10. I, uh, hopefully. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the number of people who watch that will never be sub 10. This is, this is the issue I have with that. <laughs> You'll have like 500 views and 450 of the people watching will never ever be sub 10 on 3 by 3 or even close. <laughs> yeah, like they're very hard. They're very hard barriers on the 3 by 3 Although sub sub five on Pyraminx would be interesting, um, might might be interesting to watch something like that. Yeah. So I'm no nowhere near that. I'd probably average like nine or ten. And yeah, what what's the main thing you need to do to get a bit better at Pyraminx then? <laughs> I think learn L four E and practice the V efficiency, like the block building. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because if you can solve a V efficiently for every solve and like it will only take like a couple seconds each time then it's just about like then after that all you have to do is just the L4E algorithm and like recently I was using intuitive L4E which is like L4E last solves last for edges but intuitively but recently I learned like full L4E and now that makes me able to do my last for edges like quite quickly. And full L for E is still intuitive. It's just like now I can just see a case and just know what to do. So it makes me solve it really quickly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, ultimately with the intuitive stuff, it's like intuitive F2L. Well. It's like when you first learn it, it's difficult and you won't really think about it. But when you get to 10, 11 seconds standard, like both of us, it's like, well, it is case recognition. Like I presume you'd see an F2L case and instantly know what to do even if you've never learned the algorithms for it. Yeah. <laughs> sort of F2L. <well. laughs> you are doing an RPM. I know. Yeah, just Won't finger tricking an RPM one-handed. <laughs> I'm practicing one-handed for the competition. Mm, yeah. So can you do all of your OLLs and PLLs one-handed? without any problem um no not not all of them like <laughs> oh wait wait I, oh wait oh yeah this this OLL I think I use the algorithm I think it's called the Colin Burns OLL I can do it two-handed but when I try it one-handed I just mess up in it so when I get um oh when I get when I get that case what I would do is I would just I would just do like OLL. I mean, I just orient the edges and then I'll. Yeah, I mean that. Orient the corners and then PLLs. PLLs, I'm fine with. I can do the PLLs. And I've recently watched like Cube Skills videos of like Felix Zemdegs doing those one handed PLLs. And like I've, I've learned some extra out, different algorithms, like for the F term, for example. I know another one that where you use one with just R and U and L moves and it's a lot better for finger tricks. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. I've never really thought, I mean, the F, F perm, like, I think that is just fine. Especially the last bit, the last bit is fine. I find, yeah. It's like R, U, F is like quite difficult one handed. Hmm. Yeah. Although you have got to get used to that because I presume T perm is the same thing. Presume you, yeah, T perm, yeah, but T perm only uses like a couple F moves and it's a short algorithm, so but like I also learned a different algorithm for the J perm, like a couple of days ago, I learned one where I think you do like R and R, R, U, and L moves for this, you know, the one where you usually do R, U, F, yeah. I mean, funnily, I enough, do one uh, with the R, U, L one is actually the first J perm I learned because <laughs> I didn't learn the good PLLs and, and note to everyone thinking of learning full PLL learn good PLLs please you'll thank me later don't go for the easy ones just because they're easy doing that for an M perm may be easy and you can learn it straight away but this M perm is much faster even worse is trying to mirror that for the other M perm and doing that for an NB perm. 
Like, yeah, I use the I R U R prime U and then JPUM. That's what I, I do. Yes, that's that's what I do for NA. Although, what, and then, do, what do you and do? And then for the thing? other one, I just use R U and L R U and L moves. Oh right, okay, yeah. Sim it's quite similar to one of the JPUMs. Yeah, I think I used to do that, but then I learned some other one, it's, um, which is RF RF U. Hard to explain. Maybe I'll put the algorithm on the screen in the editing, but um, yeah. I mean, I do remember some of the COLLs are really annoying to try and do one-handed. I don't know if you know any COLLs. I mean, I've noticed on your on your YouTube channel you actually I have know, COLL I, stuff, but <laughs> I presume you don't know much. CLL. Yeah, I I know I know some COLL cases. Like I know all the ones for like the H, and I think I know all the Pies as well. Right, and I know some of like the the T's. I know, I know some, and for ZBLO, I know like just like some of the easier ones. Like for this case, where you kind of oh. got where you've got that COLL case, and you're just gonna do R perm and Y perm. Yeah, I mean that's that's just and blind. That's just blind setup, isn't it? Basically, yeah. I mean that's precisely what you'd do if it was you. You move that. Into the into the buffer position um, and do the yeah. blind algorithm, then reverse setup. Do you, you do yeah. blind solving at all? Blind solving, I used to do. I used to do quite a lot, but now I don't practice it anymore that much. I kind of gave up on blindfolded because I find it too frustrating. I don't know if that's just because I haven't practiced enough, but mm. yeah, yeah, I can do the cube blindfolded. It takes me a really long time. Mm. I, I finally got back into it like because I remember I did get close to the two minute barrier like two years ago and I've now tried I'm now trying to get back because I, I slowed down to like four minutes and now I have got back to like two and a half minute average if it's successful but it it is interesting because yeah I, it's a bit annoying plus, plus I'm the sort of person that doesn't use letter pairs and just tries to brute force memo 20 letters which um is definitely possible i i will say that you probably don't think you can do it but you probably can but it's also like probably not the best way of doing things although i do question like what do what do people like Stanley Chapel do? I, I can't imagine them in like 20 seconds for four blind memo. Surely they're not converting that into a letter pair. Yeah, some people do it insanely quickly. Mm, yeah. I don't I, I don't I don't understand how that works. Like when I could do when I practiced blindfolded, it would take me like over 10 minutes to memorize it. Right. Mm. And it would be so hard to just get the letter pairs to like stick in my head. I'll right. just forget. I'll just forget the letter pairs. Go through it all over again. And it, it, I'm just slow at memorization for blind. Right. Yeah. I mean, I presume you get faster with practice, but um, yeah. It's yeah, I, I didn't practice it much. So, so what about bigger okay. cubes? Have you got any six by sixes and seven by sevens and all that? Yes, I I do. Um, I actually have a nine by nine, but I don't have it with me at the room. It's like upstairs. But this is a seven by seven. <laughs> the X Men Spark, isn't it? Yeah. And then I I have a I have a V cube. Yeah, I have a V cube nine, but I don't have I don't have that here at the moment. Oh right, okay, yeah, V cube. <laughs> I mean, I'm just sitting right by a nine by nine, but the problem is with this nine by nine is that it's broken. Um, yeah, it's a return. <laughs> Some of the oh, I, I'm kind of slow at seven by seven. Mm. So what do you average then? Like, I don't really do time solves. I just solve it every now and again. But I think when mm. I did do time solves, it was like maybe like seven or eight minutes. Right, yeah. So I can't I mean, exactly remember. Yeah, you do need to get that down to six minutes for make cut off. That's <laughs> what they do. Yeah, I think I just need to practice it like 
look ahead is something I struggle with. And sometimes I find on six by six and seven by seven, sometimes I just don't know what to do as a solution. But as when it comes to like five by five and four by four, I feel like I'm all right at those events. Like I'm not terrible. I'm just like a bit slow. Mm, yeah. So like how much cubing do you actually do then per day? <laughs> I cube. I do loads of songs per day, but mostly just practice three by three. So if you had to estimate how many solves do you think you've done on the three by three in total? <laughs> 43 quintillion, 252 quadrillion, 3 trillion, 274 billion, 489 million, 856,000 solves in, in the total years I've been cubing. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that's a vast overestimate. And it does gain some interesting questions. 43 quintillion combinations. That basically means you randomly scramble a cube. Nobody will have ever seen that scramble before. It's interesting to think about that. Like, you just, if I just do that, like, statistically, nobody's ever seen this scramble, almost certainly, which is an interesting thing to think about. Um, non cubing related, I guess. Um, I presume you're still at secondary school. Um, yeah. What, what year are you in? Year 10. Right, so you've gone into GCSE. So what what are you studying then? I'm studying computer science, photography, and business. Okay, interesting. Only three options, and <laughs> I mean, how much? I presume at GCSE you don't actually have that much work, do you? Although although you do have a fair amount because you've got to do all the keep up all your subjects, so. Is it okay balancing that and all the cubing you do? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I just do cubing in my spare time. And then like in mm. school, like I might get a bit of like coursework and homework, but but I can still I can still keep up with the cubing. But keeping up with school and YouTube is a little bit more difficult, but I can mm. still do cubing whenever I like. Well, yeah. I mean, you can pick up a cube and just solve it. <laughs> not that difficult just like oh, i have to do with this one so anyway i think you wanted to finish about half six didn't you so um anything else you want to say before we end this interview um buy cubes from speedcubing.org and <laughs> if you want to use the discount code speedy gold cuba then use it Right. Okay. Well, thank you. Maybe some people will. Right.